Hello and welcome to another exciting broadcast of 3D Buzz MMO class with yours truly, Mr. Bill Clinton. And Derek T. Stevens here. Thank you very much for the introduction, Mr. Clinton. As always, a pleasure everyone you pop in. And at my side, I have the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Nelson as well. Uh, I was talking to class earlier. I know you're wearing your cowboy hat, your thong, your bunny slippers. I will ever have my, my stepmoms in, in actually the other room, so I'm not wearing my standard teaching garb I have chaps on tonight and my cowboy hat. So I'm ready to rock this casbah. Awesome. Um, all right. Hey, uh, we got lots going on. Um, I finally got to talk to Mr. Busby, Mr. Jason Busby himself, uh, about the MMO class. We have a lot of exciting uh, new topics and things that we're going to share here in the near future. Uh, I have my art leads uh, with me as well. I want to welcome everybody to the class. Um, Right now, what I'll probably do, you see the Elysian on my screen. Again, I'm pointing to the screen as you can see it. Um, you can't see me point, however. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to see if uh, we'll start out with Ray, Mr. Ray, because what I want to announce is that uh, the leads and the art team are going to be working on a, a comic book series of like seven or eight pages to share a story about the culture and make it action packed and give a taste of what the Elysians in the world, their world, look like. And Mr. Ray's got some great ideas. Is Mr. Ray available? Uh, he's here. Let me go ahead and pull him in. All right. I like Mr. Ray. He's, he's old and he's cunning and he's, he's, he's pretty. He's a pretty man. Thank you, Mr. Clinton. Not a problem, Derek. Just happy I could be here. Mr. Ray, you, you here? Yeah. Hey, how you doing, dude? Uh, can you hear me now? I, I can hear you now. It's a pleasure uh, to have you. Pleasure to have you. Didn't know they had done that. Surprise. Surprise, surprise, surprise. I'm here, Mr. Clinton here, and Mr. Nelson is here. And um, I, I talked a little bit about the computer, not the computer, uh, the comic book. Um, and as I'm going to throw up a couple images, uh, that's not what I need. This is what I need right here. Our comic books are going to basically, again, it's a comic book page. This is one I did a long time ago. Uh, we're going to try to keep it down to, let's see, there's one, two, actually three panels, even though the bottom one's cut up. We're going to try to keep it maybe five, six panels at most. Uh, I've worked on a couple projects where some people want me to have like seven to eight, sometimes nine different panels on the page. And that's okay every now and then, but it's just really hard to get detail, and I think it gets convoluted. So with that in mind, I, Mr. Ray, if you can share the process of, or the story that, that you, you've written so far and your ideas on the comic book, we'll, we'll do that and we'll jump into all the art leads what they've, uh, they've been doing this week and we'll also open it up for questions and comments. Is that cool with you? Sure. All right, Mr. Ray, this is Mr. Clinton. <laughs> I'm, I'm very glad that you are here. It shows a People like you and me are tenacity. We're filled with vinegar and spice, and, and as the women like everything nice. So please, without further ado, I want you to share your story. Just deny, deny, deny. Clinton, shut up. Seriously, Mr. Ray, go ahead with your story. All right, thank you. Uh, well, when Derek asked me a day or so ago to uh, think about a, a, a short story for a comic, uh, I remembered uh, that I went to a uh, <coughs> birthday party for a friend of mine who was Korean, for his granddaughter, actually, not for him. And what they did was place the child on the floor. Apparently, this is a custom. And they had a number of objects in front of the child. I think there was some rice, there was some money, um, a golf ball, uh, things of that nature. And... Uh, the concept was whatever the child went for, that would say something about the child's destiny. So I thought, well, maybe that's how the Alethan children end up bonding with their stones, their soul stones. So the story opens with a very proud mother with a babe in her arms and a brand new soul stone at the bottom of its throat preening and bragging to a couple that has a baby in their arms that does not yet have a soul stone. And she tells them how wonderful it is and how glad she is that her, her son picked 
the most expensive stone that was available. And uh, she asked them, isn't your child uh, about to be bonded? And they say, well, yes, in, in, in a couple of dawnings, uh, it, it'll be her turn. They look quite worried. Um, after this woman leaves, the husband and the wife look at each other and the wife says, couldn't you have gotten something better? And he says, I'm a poor man. I work as hard as I can. This is all I could get. Next scene, you're at the bonding. It's a, a small arena. <coughs> the, children, uh, the people of the village are gathered around. Uh, the head match comes up and takes the baby from uh, the mother's arms, uh, compliments her on how beautiful the baby is, and uh, asks who has the stones for this little girl to choose. The father sheepishly gives him four rather nondescript stones, which he places on the ground and then sits the baby in the center, center of the ring, small ring, and says to her, choose well, my child, this will be your destiny. As the baby begins to move, drawn to the stones, because Alethans and these sentient stones did evolve together, and so there is a natural tendency for them to want to come together, a hooded man on the edge of the pit drops a fifth stone. The baby instantly mesmerized, crawls directly to this stone and grabs it. And the fate is sealed. That stone is the child's soul stone. The parents startled look up, the hooded man is gone. Our next scene, we're in school, and all the children are learning to control their soul stones. Our heroine is there, she's grade school age. Uh, one child is has her hands out, and there's controlling a ball of fire dancing above her fingers. Another child is pointing at some blocks and levitating them from the floor and building a little uh, structure simply by pointing. Um, and yet another child um, is uh, causing the wind to blow and muffling, mussing the girl's hair next to him as he laughs. Poor, our poor heroine, uh, she is trying desperately to do something, and her stone seems to be able to do a little bit of everything, but nothing very well, and she's quite depressed, and, and at lunchtime she gets teased in the playground. Fast forward, she's now coming up on puberty. Her parents are concerned. She's depressed. If she goes on her quest, which she must, if she doesn't do well, she could die because there are, there are deadly uh, trials before her. The day comes for her, uh, for her trial. And if you could give me the screen, uh, could, could you show my screen? Mr. Nelson, can you uh, do that pretty please? Roger that. Here it comes, sir. She stands at the top of the set of stairs. Look at you go, man. That is beautiful. And she walks down the stairs. And at the bottom where you can't see because I haven't actually built that yet, uh, there is a doorway. And up here behind this, actually, there's going to be a raised area. And there's going to be uh, five thrones, with one as the highest. <coughs> going to be earth, air, fire, and water, a match for each, and then the senior match at the top. And as she hits the bottom of these stairs, uh, she will uh, go through the doorway. And at that point, the senior match will teleport her to her first trial. Her first trial will be a puzzle of some sort, and she's a very smart girl, so she will uh, be able to puzzle her way through whatever that task is. The instant she is successful, she's teleported again to yet another spot, and here she's in trouble because in front of her 
she knows where this guy comes from. He is a criminal, a murderer, who has been given the task of confronting her and either dying himself or killing her. That's the only choice this guy has. And next to him is a beast that has under the control of a stone that he controls, and it is a savage beast. And the two of them confront her. Her heart sinks. She grabs her war staff, holds it up, and as he slams his staff toward her, suddenly it shatters on a field, a force field that is cropped up around her. And in the next instant, the beast turns on its master and rips out his throat, turns to her enraged, snarls, and suddenly becomes meek and lies down at her feet. Nice. That's, that's the end of the opening uh, scene. Now, I would say a longer story would take her through her entire quest successful. And as she goes along, what she learns is that her stone's talent is controlling other stones. So when she finally uh, has ended her quest successfully, she comes back to the arena in triumph, alive, passing all of the tests before her. She gets to name her stone. This is the tradition. She calls it Spellbinder. And the head mage asks her why, and she just smiles and says, I just thought it sounded nice. And the end of the first full comic is as he turns to walk back to his throne, she smirks as she and her stone cause him to stumble slightly. And she <laughs> to think about the adventures that will confront her in future installment. So that's, that's the basic story. I like that. I like it that there's intrigue, there's buy into it. I'm already wanting to know who in the crap that, uh, that hooded figure is, why he gave it to her, and where this person's at, and is she going to be a pawn and a tool? That, that's a big question. And uh, did, he, did he do something to the stone? Is he taking things to the next level? Is this a good thing? Is it a bad thing? There's one other thing I just wanted to show people. Uh, because I was in thinking about the stones, and I think they should be natural. They should not be faceted by by hand. And okay. I found this this great site, and I'm going to put the uh, put the URL in BuzzNet. Okay. Uh, these are all quartz crystals that you see here, and quartz is silicon oxide. So I thought that that made a lot of sense. Uh, they're beautiful and they're varied, and I think that uh, people could use these as they're drawing the various soul stones and other magic uh, stones uh, as, as models. Uh, there's lots of variation, lots of color, uh, some very beautiful stuff here. So I'm going to put this in BuzzNet, just uh, anyone who wants to use it, uh, this will be available. Uh, I like so it. That's, that's my piece. And on to whatever we'll else may be on your we'll mind. We'll stay. Hmm. I got lots of things on my mind, Mr. Ray. Shut up, Clinton. Uh, seriously, though. Um, Let's open it up for questions for anybody else. I mean, I'll save my comments for last. But uh, Mr. Nelson, see if anyone's raising their hand, uh, wants to add, uh, detract, comment. Be nice. I think it's a brilliant story and some great ideas. I love like this is an up down, upside down ziggurat inside the ground, uh, kind of a play like we talk about the Aztecs and Mayas. So anyway, if there's anybody who has some questions or comments, raise your hand now, and let's talk. All right, we have a Mr. Richard and a Wolf Knightley. All right, let's throw Mr. Richard in first, and then we will get Mr. Wolf Knightley. Hey guys, how do you hear some... me? I can hear you good. How you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to say that's uh, an awesome story. I think that's going to serve as an excellent starting point for brainstorming additional ideas, too. I agree, and this is not a done deal yet. I know Buzz is interested in their comic. My hopes are that we get, say, five or six pa uh, pages done, and then on the site we can upload one, maybe a feature, uh, like once every four, three or four days. And then we can start generating more excitement and buzz, no pun intended on the name, about designing for the MMO. 
I think that would be a great idea. Be a great challenge for the art team too. Because uh, when I say comic, I mean I want it slick. I want it professional, ink colored, word balloons. It's going to be a lot of work, but with the talent that we have here, I really believe we can do that. I think it'll be excellent and very worth it. Amen. Amen. So, what other comments you got, sir? Uh, well, I'm liking the uh, that sort of inverted pyramid design. That's pretty sweet too. Uh, seriously, Mr. Ray, man, he's got some wicked ideas. Uh, very proud of him. Very glad that he's part of the team. I mean, this is, I guess this is what's so cool about this. It's a collaboration. Uh, we have a great, solid art team, and I'm throwing it out there again to everybody listening. We still have a lot more slots open for anybody who wants to be part of the art team. You don't have to be a slick, awesome, great artist. You just have to have passion. You may have the, the next brightest, coolest idea. You may not be able to interpret or, or put it down on paper like you want, but that's not to say that we can't find an artist to match you with, and you guys work on it and bring your idea to life. So that's the plan. Um, so what do you think about the soul stones? I was really like the, the cynic and like mean part of me when, when Ray was talking about, well, that baby had a beautiful soul stone on his neck and the other baby's sitting right next to him. Like, how cool to be for the baby to reach over like, that's mine. That <laughs> probably over the top shouldn't do that. But that was what was going through my head. I'm like, hee, 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 hee. I'm like frosted many weeks. I'm a little kid frosted side. Anyway, continue to talk, Mr. Richard. Um, yeah, I like the idea of the stone sort of being bound to the person early on. Um, I never thought of it that way initially, but that would actually make a lot of sense. And then you just kind of learn to work with it as you grow up. Also, I think it would really reinforce a, a class-type system. Like the story says, you know, the guy, this is all he could afford, you know. So maybe the other stones, we don't know what they were or were not. Um, but if they're cheap stones, you know, it's like shopping on QVC for your little girl's future and power. I got this awesome looking stone, but it's only worth 10 bucks. It looks pretty, but 10 bucks. So um, I think it will really reinforce the idea of a class system so the wealthy and the upper echelons will have the money to afford to give their kids a head up, you know, leg up, start up life. Mm hmm so well done. Any other comments, sir? Because we're going to get back to you here in a little bit about magic and stuff. Okay. Um, no, no other comments for the time being. All right. Roger that. All right. Let's get to Mr. Wolf Knightley. He had his hand up next. Mr. Richard, thank you very much. Stay close, all right? Will do. All right. Well, if you should be able to. There. Hey, dude. First of all, I just want to brag on Mr. Wolf Knightley here. Uh, been doing a lot of great work online. And I apologize, I've gotten back to you on a few things, not as much as I'd like to. But the dude's been a fiend. He's been working super, super hard on a lot of great ideas. And I'm not going to spoil any of it. We're going to do that whenever we get to uh, the, the design team uh, for, for characters. But right now, what do you think about the story so far? Well, first, thank you. And, yeah, it's an interesting story. Uh, I was, I was uh, with you. <laughs> uh, my question, though, uh when you when you said that uh um that it's they shouldn't be fastened fascinated by human hands uh what exactly do you mean there can you elaborate on that well you have to remember these stones are sentient they they are not necessarily intelligent but they they had a feeling you aren't going to go take a hammer and chisel to them. So all of the things I showed on, uh, on this web page, these are all natural crystals. That's what they look like with, before any human being touches them. And I think all of these, uh, or an Aletheian for that matter, all of these could be uh, at least starting points to model a whole, a whole lot of stones. By the way, they... The soul stone is not the only magic stone, but it's the one that each person ends up bonded with. Other magic stones can be amplify powers, or uh, they're how the magis, for example, can uh, change the course of rivers, make uh, crops die, or make them thrive. Uh, so 
we're going to have, I would hope, a lot of different looking stones. And you can also have uh, things that are visibly different by class if we decide to go there. But I think that you could, uh, with not much difficulty, take some of these, uh, these images and make something that would look quite nice uh, at the base of someone's uh, neck, right in the, where the clavicle comes together, uh, without having to make it look like what, the way we would carve up a diamond or an emerald. Uh, I, I think if it's alive, you aren't going to be doing that to it. You're going to take the stone as it grew itself. That's my thought. Would it mold, right. itself, would it mold itself into the person's skin? So like you said, it would be sentient? sentient? Oh yes, it it it, uh, it bonds with it shows it's showing and it can glow and and pulse and do all kinds of things, but it becomes a part of the person. Uh, it's a symbiote. Cool, and that's not to say the other stones for like uh, the magical weapons, shields, and all that. Uh, those may be the same stone, but a, a different power level, where they're sentient, but not soul stones. That way, you can so we can make cool jewelry out of them. Yeah, the soul stone is how the individual communicates with all the other stones that are not soul stones. Nice, I can see that. Anyway, Mr. Knightley, yeah. continue. Yeah, I, um, I, I have no problem with one stone that uh, is uh, uh, actually uh, fused with the individual, <laughs> the person. Uh, or the Elysium. Uh, yeah, it was uh, my concern was uh, about the jewelry and armor and, and stuff, but it sounds like there'll be other stones. But I, I, um, I, I also want to point out again that uh, the Elysians wouldn't have to uh, take a, a chisel and hammer to to anything, or you know. True. It's, they they could it could be a very gentle process of uh, using magic to to form say gold around uh, one of the stones in a gentle fashion. Also, I mean, they're they're probably called stones for a reason. They're probably pretty pretty tough. So it's like uh, things that we might think of as being painful. This, uh, they may have no sensation, or, or they might be, they might find it interesting as long as it's not doing any damage. It's extreme temperatures, extreme heat, cold. Uh, well, Mr. Wolf Knightley, I, this is this is Mr. Clinton. I, uh, <clears throat> I passed a couple stones last night. Let me tell you what, they are tough, very tough. I don't think Mr. Clinton gets to the whole idea about the memo. I'm sorry he interrupted, but continue. Well, I think you got well, the, the main point. Well, What's up? reminded me of a couple of other things, if I could just make a, a comment quickly. Please. Just, uh, and by the way, Wolf, I absolutely agree with you uh, that people can use their stones to help shape other stones. But I'm just saying the soul stone should probably be natural. The, the other thing I was thinking was you probably aren't going to be smelting a lot of metal. But the nice thing is the one metal that is available uh, as metal naturally is gold. So I would think their jewelry is, is all gold. In terms of their other uh, artifacts, I would think it would be crystalline, uh, wood, uh, leather bindings, that sort of thing. And uh, I don't know if anyone uh, has read uh, the Neil Stevenson book, I think it's called Snow Crash, but there was a, uh, there was a, a Native American character in there who uh, in the day would have been a flint chipper, but instead he used glass and his skill was so good that he took the crystalline uh, down to an edge that was one molecule wide and he could slice through anything. Uh, so I, that's another thought that I thought we could possibly bring into the game that they could easily form uh, crystalline uh, devices with that kind of an edge that would uh, be uh, absolutely devastating 
particularly uh, against the earthlings who would have no idea that anything could be that sharp. So anyway, I'm going to shut up now. But you no, 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 that's good. It's a great idea. This is how the process works. Uh, let me piggyback what? on you for just real quick. Um, what I like about this, and I understand uh, Wolf's concern about, you know, what he can do for jewelry and this and that, but how cool would it be for game mechanics? Because every game worth its weight in gold, basically, you have crafting. How cool to be able to, to craft these things using magic and instead of hammering chisels like a lot of these games, but maybe some of the stones that are so powerful, instead of, uh, I guess, gathering earth and clay and water and all that, the elements, you have to get other people who are also crafters to put in uh, to make the, some of the mo more powerful stones. So it, 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 I guess it spurs on cooperation and socialization in the game. That's my um, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I, I, I wasn't so much thinking about uh, shaping the stones so much as, as just uh, um, uh, actually fascinate, fasc <laughs> fascinating them to uh, just uh, like shaping uh, the metal around them so they could stay they could keep their whatever shape they are, but it's just like uh, hold them in a case and and something a little bit more like that, so they could uh, wear it. I I also don't uh, um, see why they couldn't have things like other other metals like silver or or any other kind of steel or anything because uh, I mean they they might be able to I mean they they. I mean, since they're doing things magically, they might be able to do it, make a sword and, uh, you know, make the metal in the sword in uh, a couple of seconds rather than, you know, spending all day smelting. And <laughs> doing True. All and then again, because of magic, if they're going to be based on this sort of culture, they may not need silver and, and bronze and all that. It's definitely worth exploring. I'd love to get a, a list of pros and cons and... Again, the environment dude, Mr. Steve, and his environment team can make different weapons with different attributes of, you know, the different metals and stuff. But uh, I like to explore that in the story, whether we want to have, you know, an abundance of a certain sort of metal. Or, you know, maybe there's, there's a world full of diamonds, and these diamonds worth lots of money, and maybe that's why the humans are here. We, we'll, we'll worry about the humans later, but uh, I think it's definitely, definitely worth exploring. Well, one thing... That struck me when he said maybe they just everything is in gold. That it would be kind of uh, boring to to see everything in right. this golden glaze to everything. So we'll definitely but, work but, on that. But yeah, I mean, it's like uh, yeah, that, that there is a an interesting uh, thing there to uh, figure out. As to, I mean, if you if you're going to have um, uh, like a, a, a sword with a uh, a, a stone it, um, infused with it, it um, how, how much is the stone um, giving it its power? Uh, you know, adding to to the usefulness of that sword, and how much is just the sword itself? Again, uh, in my humble opinion, I'm, I'm thinking game mechanics because, you know, armor, weapons, they all break. You have to get gold or whatever your currency is to repair them. It would be interesting if, like you said, you know, the, the stone powers it up only so much. As it loses power, the, the metal it's infused in starts to break down too. And then, you know, you can go to a shaman or whatever, reinfuse the magic, and maybe the, the, the sword will heal or something like that. Uh, a lot of possibilities to look at. I, I I have a half thought for me. <laughs> that, okay. Uh, so may, maybe stupid. I haven't figured it out yet. But maybe I was I was thinking about uh, you, you talked about currency, and I was thinking, well, if you can if you can make your own gold very easy, obviously you're going to need some substance to make that with. But if you, uh, maybe gold might not be that valuable or you know 
it's a possibility anyway. Now, um, I was thinking what what could have value, and I was thinking the stones could have value, but that you know you're not going to be tra really trading in stones because that would be too many stones and stuff. So I was thinking, uh, I don't know, maybe maybe it's almost it's almost like like something uh, that is is somewhat rare, but um, that that maybe it's it's something that can't be made through magic. I don't know, but it, it's something that would actually give the, the stones nourishment or something, or, or um, you know, just to, to make them stronger or something. Uh, maybe maybe like these little chip, you know, ch you know, chips of some kind of stone thing or whatever. I don't know, like, but not that kind of. So I don't know what they would be, but but uh, so maybe that could be a currency there. Definitely, we're and again, it's it's funny because in econ in college, I'm like, this is stupid. I'm never going to use this crap. But I paid attention. I passed. Yada yada yada. But when you dwell into things like this, because if you look at the economy, like World of Warcraft is prime example. It, things are so inflated on the alliance side and then the horde side. And this is when I was playing like almost a year ago. It could change, but the horde side, it was, it was nothing was worth anything over there. It was just interesting. And if there's a way to control that in game about currency, because you know currency is going to drive a great magnitude of things. But I know we're we're running on a rabbit trail right now. Any more comments on the story, Mr. Knightley? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Well, I appreciate it, and we'll be getting to you very shortly as well. Mr. Nelson, do we have any more uh, hands up about uh, the story so far? All right, so go ahead and put your... Oh, we have a Steve. Steve! But of course, we've got Steve. Hey, hey, Steve. How's it going, guys? Bonjour. Comment allez-vous? <laughs> are you doing tonight, Steve? I am just fine. How about you? I'm well. I'm doing well. I got some coffee. I got my cowboy hat and bunny slippers on. Life is good. Not complaining. Um, <laughs> what do you think? The chaps. The chaps is the mother of my stepmom's here. Don't want to be going around in a Speedo. All right. Again, <laughs> well, we're, we're digressing. Uh, I really like the story. Um, the only thing I thought of along the way was uh, some later panels. Somewhere in the background, our, uh, our hooded benefactor and or nemesis needs to occasionally be shadowed in the back, obviously watching her uh, growth and career to whatever end and kind of foreshadow whatever is going to go on in the future. Sooner or later, they're going to have to meet. So. No, I agree with that. That's what I was hoping, too. And what I got me really excited about all this, I mean, I can visualize all the characters interacting. I'm excited to find out what the backgrounds are going to be because I'm, I'm digging what Ray's got going on right here, this upside down ziggurat, ziggurat, so you pronounce it. Yeah, I that's love, very cool. That is a hell of an idea. I, I mean, he I has can, it up there, but he also did a, a pretty nice initial sculpt for the body. Do you got that, Ray? Uh, yeah, I can show that. Hold on. Yeah, please do. Now, Steve was bragging about you the other day. He said, man, Ray's just going to town. And again, for, for people watching this, you're like, well, I can't really model, I can't draw. You know what? We want ideas, ideas right now. Right. Oh, we're, we're finding out his password. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. You can see through the stars, you're pretty good. Dude. Yeah, he, he asked for some uh, critique on it, so I critiqued with the caveat of that is a way better sculpt than I could do already. But. I like the butt. Now, I'm not saying that as a man, okay? But booties are hard to do, that little crease. And I like, uh, okay, again, going to the anatomy and physiology. Because the breasts are high, and the reason why they're high right now is because the arms are high. They're pulling that muscle up. Mr. Ray, that is a beautiful sculpt, dude. I love the attention to the detail of the feet. I think uh, we've got the feet nailed. Uh, I learned a lot. And I don't know if uh, Chelsea's here, but I learned a lot from how she drew her her, her, her toes, her nails. And, again, we talked about the idea that they're always going to be up on, on the balls of their feet. I love it. I give it two thumbs up. So I yeah. posted a, um, a link in the uh, forum 
to this uh, uh, this website, P3D. So you can take a closer look at this on your own screen if you'd like to. Okay. Well done. Yeah, very nice. Okay, the only critique that I, I, I have, and again, this is not set in stone, I like to see the hands bigger. I want, I'm picturing bigger hands, especially if they're tree climbers or this or that. That's the only critique that I've got. Otherwise, the body is rocking. It, it's it's athletic without sexualizing it. It's not like, I, don't be wrong, I love Danger Girl. I love that sort of pinup, cool, pretty art. But I want to make her aliens not just pretty, but functional. I, I like the long, leaner look. My, uh, Wolf and I were talking about that not too long ago. We we like the long, lean look. And man, awesome job, dude. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyway, Mr. Steve, any more about the story? Uh, no, that pretty much covered the story for me. I really liked where it was going. Um, it would be interesting to see uh, what happens with someone who can... There's a lot of places you can go with someone who can take control of other people's stones and therefore their power. Right. Um, and with that, I completely lost my train of thought. Oh, uh, as far as uh, in-game uh, for a money type thing, the first thing that... A couple things that popped in my mind was that um, if you can ask these other aliens to do things like uh, manipulate rock and everything else, you can certainly ask them to help you smelt metals, I would think. True. I mean, it wouldn't be something where you would want to be uh, bringing in a bulldozer and just digging into a hill, but magically they should be able to investigate and creating various uh, things like steel or anything else that they need. What I think we should have is like a cannibalistic race that eat them, and then they can say their tagline, Alethians are magically delicious. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, that's, sorry, I'm terrible. Bad Derek. But, um, and then on the subject of money, and this, I don't know, this might be a little bizarre to throw out there for the rest of the world, but um, the first thing, and I don't know why, that popped into my head was that this other race of aliens, like, any other living race is going to have losses. It may be over massive periods of time, but there may be uh, some of these other aliens that, as they're born or grow, don't make it, or as they become very ancient, pass away. And uh, whatever, uh, whatever stone or uh, petrified remains are may be something that from a faith aspect, would be extremely valuable to the Olympians and might be used as currency. That, that's a very cool idea. And we need to talk about that later. Uh, what is their life expectancy? Uh, if the stone's infusing them, if when the stone runs out of power, do they die? Does the stone provide natural, unnatural long lives? What happens if the stone's taken away? Do they, like, go into ash or become a stone statue themselves? That might be kind of cool. Indeed. Although I, I was thinking on the uh, the symbiotic aliens that are, you know, these massive organisms, what happens when one dies? Does, does ah. it, why would that become, you know, from the, their entire society is built around this relationship. Whatever remains there are would be more valuable to them than their own. True. True that. I like where you're going with that, my friend. Indeed, indeed, I do. Awesome. Mr. Ray, have, you, have we spurred any new ideas on to you? Oh, yeah. What, one thing that people should think about, in our own world, currency has no intrinsic value. Uh, we no longer have silver and gold coins. It's simply a way that we, we store the value of goods and services. Uh, I work for you. You give me a certain amount of dollars or pesos or francs and the guy down the street will accept those for his beans and the guy across the street will accept those to fix my car but they have no intrinsic value so you can have money without it having to be made of anything precious true because we're no longer on the gold standard however china may be very soon but that's that's a different story but, but I like that. It could be, uh, <laughs> here's some cocoa leaves. Uh, I don't know, but some definitely some good things to be thinking about. I like it. So with that, it is, uh, I got 951.
and I really have to use a potty. So let's take a five, and when we come back, we'll get all the art leads together. Uh, those who are on right now, go ahead and stay on. Uh, since Steve is on, we'll start out with his team about his environments. Steve's got some kick-ass stuff to show you guys, hands down. He has been doing – everybody here has been growing. I mean, since the – I guess the conception of the conceptual art class for the MMO, you guys have been growing by leaps and bounds. So I'm very anxious to show you guys' work off and brag on you. So, Mr. Nelson, if you're ready for that, we'll take a 10-minute break and we'll come back. Is that good? Yeah. Hey, welcome back, everybody, to uh, the rest of uh, the hour 3D Buzz MMO concept class. Man, we got some cool, cool stuff going on. Uh, a little bit behind the scenes, uh, I, I didn't share with everybody, but I'm going to share right now. On my Facebook page, uh, I posted some uh, images of the MMO class, and this lady said, wow, I like the drawing, this and that. And Steve, our, our lead artist for uh, environments and weapons, he posted on there. She, she didn't know what an MMO was, and he was cool, very respectful, and, and told her what it was. And she's like, man, I could do that. So then I post back, man, hey, we'd love to have you in class, yada, yada, yada. I was telling Steve, I'm like, do you know who that was? He's like, no. I'm like, that is the lady who was responsible for bringing the Hunger Games to North Carolina. She's like big in the, in the showbiz business. And it just goes to show you, you never know who's watching, who's listening. So that's why I really want us to do something nice, slick, and awesome to grab lots of attention. If you work on this game, your name's going to get out there. Again, you don't have to be a super, super artist. You just have to have passion, and passion will lead to money eventually. But it would be nice to do what you want to do, can do, want to do, one day in the end. It'll take a while to get there, man. I'm living, breathing proof on, proof on that, but it is possible. Absolutely. Amen. All right, so Mr. Steve. Yes. Tell us what you've been working on this week. Nothing. Mr. Steve is the environment artist <laughs> and uh, weapons lead artist. And, uh, man, you've got a couple backgrounds on your Facebook page I've been bragging about. We did not get to show them last week. So I strongly encourage Hint Hint if we can take his screen and, and he can pull those up. Because I really want you to explain the speed painting that you did. Because before you're like, oh, it's taken me three or four hours to do X, Y, and Z. And then you have this beautiful image of a background. And you're like, I was using speed painting. I'm like, holy crap in a cracker, explain this to me. What's up, Lucy? <laughs> All right, well, the first thing I'll knock off is uh, Donald's work. Donald can't be with us tonight because he has to be up in a few hours for work. Um, so he, uh, what he sent me was basically the uh, image he had done last week. He fleshed out a little bit more, um, showing the hillside with the uh, large sculpture as an entrance, and then a couple of sculptures along the bridge leading to the, uh, the mountain that uh, they all live in. I, I love the highlights the, the, the light is catching on the trees right there. That is brilliant. Yeah, I liked a lot of that. I liked the red background. Um, I did tell him that that was kind of a hard read. I wasn't sure what was going on there, and I was looking forward to hearing it tonight. And Then that's when I got the email saying, well, you'll have to wait because I'm not going to be there. So, so I don't know what's going on there yet, but I am patiently waiting to find out. Now, the top left looks like it's beginning to be a dragon-esque like statue or formation right there of rock. I'm very anxious to see what he's going to do with that. Well, I, I think that was his take on um, a tilted back Alethian head like he had spoken about ah. with the entrance through the mound. Ooh, I got you. I can see that now. Yeah. And then I like that. He also added in a couple little tiny Alethian statues along the bridge. which uh, The way he did them was very simple but very cool. It was very like, Art Nouveau. I like it. Very cool. I'm pr man, I wish he was here. I, I will brag on him and get a hold of him uh, tomorrow online, but well done. Indeed. He's, he's coming leaps and bounds too, man. I mean, he was good when he started out, but the more you do... I, okay, back in the 80s, everybody knows the band Poison, okay? Love him, hate him, whatever. But there was an interesting interview with C.C. DeVille, who was the lead guitarist for Poison, and he's a cocky SOB. He's like, you know, we come out, we play every night. He's like, even if I didn't want to get better, he's like, I can't help but get better. It's the same premise here. If you do this all the time, you can't help but get better. So draw, draw, draw. Indeed, indeed. Continue, sir. Continue. All right. Um, I, I can't remember what I did show last week, um, but I pulled up some of the stuff I had going on. Uh, one of the first ones I did with... 
I haven't really known where this world's going yet at, until we get more of the story fleshed out, but um, we did talk about wanting it to be a very harsh planet, and so I wanted it to be uh, uh, very active and with lots of different uh, lots of different zones in terms of, you know, Arctic or tropical or anything like that. So uh, this was one of the first ones I did with a uh, massive... I love it. Love it. ...lava waterfall. And we were talking, those little bitty figures down there, like you said, maybe in, maybe simple to do, but it adds so much to the scale. It just blows me away, dude. I love the veins. I, I love the, the shadow and lights. Well done. But explain to us how you did this. What, what, what inspired you? Um, a, a lot of my inspiration since, uh, you know, I work a gazillion hours and, uh, you know, I haven't had a vacation in, you know, like a decade. So I don't get to travel like artists should and see different things. So I spend a lot of time watching nature shows and travel shows and just push, pulling up various images online. Um, I also do a lot of pulling up other people's professional concept work from other movies and stuff like that just to see what they did with light or objects or things like that. And uh, and uh, I was thinking about this water lava fall and I saw another picture someone had done that they had just streaked light down across the concept thing and it just really gave it this really cool hue and I thought, you know, that, that could easily have been just that in the background if they were doing that kind of movie. And so that background plate with the lava was where it started and then I wanted it to have some really massive scale so I uh, made these giant cliffs with this huge fallen tree and then per uh, your advice last week where I didn't provide any scale, I was like, oh, I need to put the shadows of a couple little people looking at this thing in there so that you really understand how incredibly massive this is. Well done. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. And again, I talked to, uh, to Buzz a couple days ago, and I know you, Sid, possibly Chelsea, and I, myself, we're going to meet with Buzz uh, around the 4th of next month. And what I want us to do uh, on my end, what I'll do is I'll print up some really nice slick sheets of all a lot of the concept pieces I've done. I'm going to mount them on some nice boards. If you guys can do something similar, I, I really want to have a, a production meeting with the man himself to make sure we're going in the right direction and to show him how hard not only we are working, but all the other artists are working as well. And, 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 on, I think, go and on that front, um, we will have, I won't be staying like seven or eight days like I planned. It's only going to end up being five, but because of that, Chelsea will be with us. In fact. Awesome. 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 And uh, we're going to have at least four pages done by then. Uh, this is for the art leads. I want to meet possibly Sunday night or Monday night next week. Uh, and let's start doing some thumbnails and assigning what projects we've got to do. This world's got to be created, darn it. I got, I got monkeys in my brain. Just, they got to come out. <laughs> um, on that note, um, I never did get the forward of uh, Ray's story. So, if, Ray, if you could send that to me or Derek, you could forward the one you got. That, that would be because I, I forgot. I, 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 Ray, I bragged about you. I'm like, man, you got to read the story. This is awesome. I'm like, Steve, I'll forward it to you. And uh, that was seriously on my list of things to do, and I did not do that. I was picking out what chaps I'd wear tonight. Sorry. <laughs> I'll stay on you. It's okay. All right. Cool. That's what um, I said to Hillary. Shut up, Bill. Go ahead. And then uh, just this week being a very hectic week, I didn't have a lot of time to paint, so I continued. I decided just to continue uh, working on speed painting skills and just throwing down a lot of color and seeing what that produced. And uh, I, I really tend towards blues and oranges, and so that gave me the idea for a kind of Arctic thing. And so we did this. This is what I'm talking about, man. Even Buzz is like, I'm blown away. Dude, I'm blown, I love the mist. How did you, all right, you said you just threw down shapes and colors, really? You, explain, uh, Lucy, explain. That, that is literally, um, I, the uh, lighter blue in the way back was the background fill color I used, and then I just kept color picking from that palette area with a really large chalk brush and just scraping it around until I saw something. And All right, for those who don't know about the chalk brushes, I've, Feng Zhu uses a chalk brush. You have your, your Photoshop up. Uh, show them what the, the chalk brush looks like, how you get to it, if you don't uh, mind. 
Let's see if I can get him here. Oh, I'm looking at my screen. Yes, I no. There we go. Yeah, let me just scale that up. So that's what a chalk brush looks like when it's really huge. So uh, that's kind of what a chalk brush does. So you can just take it and, and it's literally like throwing down chalk on a sidewalk. Nice. And it can, gives it great effects. And then you can just grab some different values, throw them in there. And what I'm doing right now is literally what I started out doing. Really? And you can see already that that's beginning to look like a mountain range in the back. Nice. And so you just keep taking that and grab, you know, maybe you grab a hard round brush and scale that down. Maybe you take a little bit different color and just start to work that out. And then you play with your filters and your blurs and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, maybe you throw on a new layer. Up. Bob Ross ain't got nothing on you, dude. Yeah. You gotta love the Bob Ross and the Happy Little Trees. Happy little, happy little Elysians. And uh, you know, I, I, I jumped on the web. I looked around for. Uh, you know, if you look at any big, massive landscape pictures, you can always see a lot of atmosphere. The further into the picture it goes, and it's like, well, how are they doing that? So I just ran around looking for tutorials and stuff like that. And, you know, maybe we take a little bit of white and grab your opacity and knock it way down. And, then, and I'm glad you brought that up because it, I've not really discussed this in any class yet, but especially for background, you really need to have your foreground, the midground, and then the background, like you said, for atmosphere. Yeah. You need to you cut it in three different pieces to give it that depth. Yep, um, and things further away are always going to appear lighter and things further away are going to tend towards blue hues, at least on earthly atmospheres. What I like to challenge you with, because exactly what you just said, earth atmosphere, I like to see a mountain range with a red background for the red sky. I really like to see some concept work on that, what that might look like. Did you do one? Um, well, I did one I didn't like, but I decided to just walk away and uh, come back later. Well, that's the nature of concept. I mean, for all the great pieces we see, there's probably about 10 to 20 that you don't see because they just don't work out. Yeah, I was, it, I was just not happy with it. See. Well, the other cool thing is I, I like don't like to show my mistakes and the crap that I don't like. But it's good to let other people know that hey, not everyone, we're not, none of us are perfect. It's okay to show mistakes, because you get uh, put up on a pedestal, and like, oh, this guy can draw anything, and, and like Fang, I mean, dude, I love the guy. He, he seems down to earth. He knows what he's doing. He's been in the business forever. Him and Jay Scott Campbell, and Michael Turner are my heroes, and I'm sure that they mess up too. Oh yeah, um, actually, if uh, anybody. <laughs> Bennett, who's interested in concept art, um, FZD is Feng's uh, YouTube channel for his design school, and he's got, I don't know, like 150 videos of different stuff he did, and, and he'll flat out tell you, you know, I didn't like, I was working on this thing, and I didn't like it, so I got rid of it. It, it happens all the time. Maybe I didn't save that. That makes sense. <laughs> All right, no worries. Yeah, that, that appears to be gone. That's too bad. All right, what else you got for me today? That is beautiful, anyway, by the way. So we had this, and that was kind of based off of both the earlier Spires one I did and uh, Ray talking about getting this <coughs> to uh, manipulate stone for them, and maybe you would get a very fractal gem-like quality to the... Uh, to the housing that we, we provided for these guys. And that's how we ended up with these big tall spires and kind of off-centered uh, windows and doorways and things like that. And I have to piggyback on this. Again, as a concept artist, because this is a concept art MMO class, you nailed it. 
you have a reason for this. I mean, a reason because it looks cool is great, but you have functionality to it. It can be real. So the writer, Ray, can actually use this, uh, your idea, and build upon it. Uh, because, you know, this is your creation and this is cool for you, but you just communicated a very, very integral thing for games. And that's why concept artists, wh what I do is I'll send out little bitty notes, sometimes in the drawings, sometimes on the on the side view. I, I was doing a fire drake the other day, and I just did the line work. And, like, I wrote, this is what I want the cave to look like. Fire needs to be coming out of this, this number of hue, blah, 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 blah. These are my ideas. What do you think? Uh, so, well done, Steve. Continue. I promise I'll shut up. And, and to piggyback on that, uh, in fact, listening to one of Feng's things, he was talking about what it is to be a concept artist versus, like, a traditional art house that might do something for the movies. And, and he basically said concept art is, you know, you, you want it to be cool, you want it to be a nice composition, you want it to look great, but it's not about this super high detail or making this perfect picture. Concept artists aren't paid because they're artists, they're paid because they're idealists. And I like that. They convey an, they convey an idea. Um, you know, when, when somebody gives something to us, and I know it's happened with you, Derek, even recently, <laughs> they don't even know what they want. And so what they're really paying you for is to design for them, not to create art for them. Right. So, and, and then that plays back to... We don't care if you're a really great artist. If, if you can draw a stick guy and make notes on the side, if I get the idea, you were just a concept artist, and it worked. Yep. And that's great. Hop on in with us, and let's have fun. Amen to that, brother. All right, let's see. Uh, I've got all sorts of things going on here. Um, and then I was playing more with the speed painting throughout the week, and uh, with all of these uh, kind of dark and icy and cold-looking areas, I thought I'd try my hand at something a little more micro and a, a little more uh, an idyllic, if you will, I guess. So I was playing with that. Dude, pretty. Not I love the, the water, the, the different hues, blues, and tones. That looks like water, man. Yeah, I, I'm gonna really going to get It's kind of been a thing to really figure out water because water is hard. <laughs> Especially diving in 50 feet from above, but that's another yeah, story. Then it's like cement. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Again, you, you give value to it. You, you've given it depth. Um, Mr. Ray, what do you th is Ray still here? Yes, I'm here. Okay, what do you think, since we've got this, this beautiful piece right here, all right, for trees and forest, do we want them to look like trees on Earth, or do you have any different ideas for, for the, the woodland areas? Uh, I leave that up to you guys. Uh, it, you know, ob obviously, if it's if if the inhabitants look something like us but significantly different, I would think the plants would probably be something like us, our plants, but with the same kind of differences you might see with with the uh, humanoids. But I'm just sitting here uh, loving Steve's work. I'm hey, going to go to, I'm gonna be happy. Well, I've, I've been loving you, too. For the, and I'm like, hey, we have this head writer. Hey, look, he sculpts better than I do. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, and, and I would tend to agree with Ray, uh, both from what, if this were a real thing, would probably be true, but also from... Um, from a suspension of disbelief standpoint for the player. Um, yeah, there's there's going to be some strange flora and fauna, but I think if large chunks, at least in silhouette or color, don't kind of resemble what they would expect to find in a forest, at least some of the time, then you're going to have trouble getting them to continue to suspend their disbelief and buy into the story. Well, I, I agree. Well, one thing that we, we have to remember, however the plants work out, uh, they're still getting their energy, for the most part, from radiation from the star that this planet goes around. So something like leaves have to happen. Something uh, like canopy 
in a, an area full of large, tall plants has to happen. Is it going to look like ours? Probably not. But the basic structure is, is going to be uh, evolved on that planet not too differently from the way it would evolve on our planet. But I agree. I think we need to have some seriously dangerous plants on this planet. Yeah, I, I think you can have several species that would be com completely foreign to anything we're used to seeing. Although, if you just do a Google search on plants on this planet, you're going to find some things. You're like, really? We have that? But, <laughs> um, That's funny. But, uh, you know, I, I agree with Ray. I think, you know, maybe maybe bark on this tree has these bright yellow or bright orange veins running through it or or whatever blues or reds or anything you use on the leaves might have some very strange patterns or color palettes to them. But when you back up, you should still look at that and go, oh, a tree. I, I agree. <laughs> if, I if, agree. If in silhouette and style it doesn't look like a tree, then it's not a tree and you have a problem as far as the player is concerned. Look at this. We're like, we're, we're conceptualizing together. It's all, we're going to make some waffles in the morning. This is excellent. All right, and having done a uh, something, to me this looked more like an illustration you might do for a children's book or something, just a little bit different style. And so it was a little bit getting out of my comfort zone, so I decided to go back to my comfort zone because, you know, I didn't have a lot of time. Um, and this is the one I was telling you I was going to try and get it done, but I didn't think I'd be able to, and I was right. I wasn't able to, but I got enough to at least get an idea across. Okay. Dude! I love those crystals. I love everything about it. I love yeah, the two moons. I'm pretty happy with this so far. I love that I figured out how to do lightning in Photoshop. <laughs> I love it. Explain your technique to light, uh, lightning, and then I'll tell you what I do on mine, and we'll um, learn from each other. Well, this particular technique is really, really is only going to work for a single bolt like that. If it, if it stretches out, it's not going to work. Um, but basically, uh, on a new layer, I just use the lasso tool to create a round area there. And then uh, draw my lightning bolt down, fill it in with white, draw my um, lightning bolt down the middle in pitch black. And then you pick a side, one side or the other. You leave one side white, and you completely fill in the other side of that lasso with black. Um, and then you uh, filter that to use the uh, difference cloud setting on the renders. Okay. And when you get that, you'll get this cloudy-looking thing with this big black line down the middle. You invert that, and you suddenly get this very lightning bolt line looking. Nice. Thing. Well done. Sure beats mine. <laughs> um, I have a background like that, and it was for some some kung fu lightning movie thing I did, right? And, of course, there has to be lightning. I'm like, how the heck am I going to do this? So I literally, in a dark background, use my eraser tool and then got different shades of light blue and then painted on top and then did the blur thing to it. Oh, there you go. Yeah, and there's, I mean, there's a couple layers of blur behind it and a few other things you got to do to make all the difference clouds disappear. And it's, it's, it's a little more involved than what I said. And frankly, to get it just right, I'd probably have to go look it up again and do it a few more times to remember. But Great. And this is what I'm hoping. Again, I, I can't promise anything. Uh, Buzz is the ultimate say-so. But if we can get the comic book page on, like on, on top of the site and have it changed out once every four days, and then maybe one or two concept pieces around it, I, I think when people can see these pictures, they're gonna, it's going to generate just tons of interest. And the other thing we, we've got to do is we've got a lot of links in, in, in the Buzz channel and you know the forums. And I know there's a way. I've done it before. Meta showed me how to do it. And for the life of me, I can't. She even like, no, you just have to type this. I still can't get it right. I'm old. I can't even work the Xbox. Okay? I try. But we need to be able to show our pictures as soon as you open up the form, boom, they're there. Instead of clicking to a link. Again, I think it will also generate a lot more interest. Yeah, I think so, too. But no, I, I think we have a lot of things on the table that will start to generate interest and just keep work plugging away at it and everybody keep being involved and it'll, it'll start rolling and once it starts rolling it'll roll faster and pretty soon we'll be like I don't have enough time to get any of this done. Right, right. What if I'm fearful of all, the, all, all I can't talk, all the art leads 
all their time will be managing all the other great artists, and they won't be able to do a lot of drawing. Now, I want to avoid that as long as possible, but that will be happy when it happens like that. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a question of, well, do we want problems that suck, or do we want problems that we should be grateful we're dealing with? Exactly. Um, and uh, that was everything I had for this week, but uh, it, Nelson, is Sid here? Uh, doesn't look like she is, no. All right, doesn't look like they made it. Um, Chelsea sent me a TIFF. I'll try and zoom this up. Um, based on different environments, the different body types they might have. I like the back. And yeah, she, she had a base one, what I think was her idea for more of a foresty one, and then an aquatic one. Well done. Well, well done indeed. I love them. Love where they're going. I and that is a per perfect segue into going into uh, what characters we've created this week. Yeah, and if Sid's not here, hopefully uh, Wolf's going to jump in and uh, take Wolf's got a lot to show, man. Wolf's been busy, dude. And Yeah, you were like, he's got all this stuff, and I've been looking on the forums. I'm like, oh, he hasn't posted it, or I'm retarded. I'm not sure which. But <laughs> I think a little, little bit of that, but he is in the Dropbox. Oh, in the Dropbox. I keep forgetting we've set that up. Yeah. Hey, all right. Um, I, I and, love the figure that – let me dissect this a little bit. Uh, I love that it is it's a dynamic pose, but it's not like, look at me, I'm a superhero. It's very dynamic but relaxed. I love how the figure itself is leaning forward. Uh, her, her toes, like I said, I learned a lot from her just by looking on how she made her feet. She did great. She and, was really inspired with those. I was impressed. Really, yeah, no kidding. I love them. Love them, love them, love them. So with that, do you have any more comments, concerns, questions? Um, well, I've um, Sid also, because she wasn't sure she would get here, she was playing around with the idea with the uh, nose thing we talked about last week. Uh -huh. And so she sent this. She said, this is, she said, I really had a hard time trying to figure out where you were going with that. And these were only the really the only successful drawings that I had. And she kind of took what I said and put the nostrils up in the front. But uh, so I, right before class, quick yanked it into Photoshop just so that she could see it. And that is more what I was getting at to make them a little more alien. I, I liked that. I liked that a lot. And I agree. And the other thing, um, the nose, the one on the far right, instead of being round like that, and it just be because maybe because I'm used to like very angular sort of drawings, but if that nose was more of an angle instead of rounded, with that nostril, I think that's the look that I would love to see. And we're still fleshing it out. We've got to get these the looks down like ASAP. So again, when we we talk the next, we'll have an art lead meeting. We'll nail it down. Uh, but I like where that's going. And with Wolf, what he's done, we'll have a lot to look at and a lot of choices to make, which is going to be great, better than, like, I have no idea what I want. Yeah, that's. That. I'm really looking forward to getting them fleshed out so that, I, uh, so that I can start picturing them in environments they would be in and see what we can do. Right. Awesome. You tell your girls they rock. That they do. Indeed. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Steve Curtis, our lead environment artist and lead weapons artist. Uh, I know weapons have kind of been thrown on the side for a minute, but let's get to Wolf and Richard, and then we'll get to me, and we'll wrap things up. We may go over a little bit tonight, and I apologize for that, but we just I don't want to stop when we got some really good ideas going. So with that, uh, Mr. Nelson, if you could pretty please uh, see if Mr. Wolf Knightley is available. Yep. And, and I guess also, if any hands are up for questions or comments, I, I don't want to uh, lose that. I mean, this is our meeting, not my meeting. It's our meeting, everybody involved. If there's any comments or questions, also feel free to raise your hand. Chirp. Chirp, chirp. chirp Wolf, chirp. you are unmuted. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I muted myself earlier, so I was talking to you. <laughs> hey, man, you're back. So what do you think so far, dude? Yeah, I, um, I, I liked the, actually, like, 
uh, those uh, like the, from from the front front view. I like kind of what that those nostrils are doing. It's kind of interesting. And I liked I, I like the kind of shape the nose, but yeah, I I liked uh, the one uh, that Chelsea, I believe, uh, had yeah. had done her stuff. That was good. I like yeah. like you said the back stuff. A beautiful, beautiful back. The, and the shoulder stuff, I, I like that. Definitely. Again, man, we got some great. I can't wait. Uh, and maybe what we can do here, I'm just throwing an idea out there, but maybe parts of the meeting when we have Buzz and we have all the concept art in one place, maybe we can record it somehow and throw bits and pieces of that on the net as well to generate more interest. That would be cool. We're definitely taking pictures, so I will bring my bunny slippers and thong, okay? <laughs> Nelson and I will pose side by side, so you know this is real. Perfect. So, I'll pose on it. so uh, Mr. Wolf Knight, are you ready to show your artwork? Yep. Roger that. Mr. Nelson, could you take his screen, please? I'm telling my stepmom good night. Love you. Hello? Hello. Oh, you cut off for me. I'm, so, oh, I'm sorry. I was telling my stepmom good night because, you know, I oh. love her. And... Okay. <laughs> All right. So explain, Lucy. Explain. What's going on okay, here? Okay. This is uh, female profiles. I was uh, just started messing around with uh, a lot of different shapes. I was thinking about, you know, trying to make uh, the nose be kind of uh, something that just came out at the bottom and wasn't really there. Um, I ended up not really liking, you know, how straight that was, but it was just a concept. So, I, um, so I mean, I, I tried a lot of different things. This one's a little silly, but it's kind of interesting at the same time. I'm really liking uh, second from the left on the bottom. This one? Uh, the other side, second from the left. Oh, left. Yeah, that one. I like that a lot. As far as the facial profile, I like that nose like that. Yeah. I I liked this one the best. Um, I liked, uh, especially I liked the the head, how it was shaped here, kind of a curve and then curved in. I thought that was kind of an attractive shape. Yeah. Good attention to detail because, I mean, hey, other good news is we're going to have an anatomy and physiology class very soon. It's going to be like a four or five week down and dirty learning how to draw. Uh, we're going to learn all sorts of major muscles. And speaking of that, the anatomy of the cranium, how the cranium is formed. Um, maybe it doesn't go straight from the cranium, and maybe they have a couple extra bones than we do. So I think that's a great attention to detail, Mr. Knightley. Thanks. And this, I was just, I had, why there's this moon shape, I had um, just cut and uh, paste, you know, I actually just cut and moved uh, lassoed and moved this thing, but I kind of liked it as maybe uh, something that could be painted on or something, so I just left it there. That's cool. Then. And then since since I like this one, I decided to kind of try and um, oops, uh, develop it a little bit more, so, but but I was tr I decided to try and cut back the nose, uh, so I definitely like that a lot better. Okay. Right, that part. Like the there. What's that? I do like the indent there from the brow. Yeah. You like this? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, where yep. it comes off the brow and sinks in a little. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I, st I started more like that, but the, I, I had this notion of uh, kind of uh, counterbalancing a little bit for... Um, the back uh, to have the bring the face out a little bit I ended up uh, re uh, really liking this I think this is the one I ended up kind of liking the best here uh, and, and I notice actually down at the very bottom right how they're getting more and more pointy maybe that could also be the distinction between males and females maybe the males are more uh, quote unquote aerodynamic more pointed where the females are soft and rounded, just yeah, like the, you know, that, that's exactly what that's exactly what um, I've I've been shooting for is to get 
kind of a, more of a rounded thing, whether it's like this or like that. But uh, yeah, these these are um, yeah. I, I I wouldn't actually like that because this is more like how I got the have it set up for the males. So this is just some really rough ear things placement. No, I so, like that. Great concept pieces, man. You did a lot of work. Thanks. I'm proud of you. Well done. And then uh, the male. Now, what I, I've realized that uh, the head needs to be up more. This is too human-like, and it you know it doesn't. But uh, I was I was trying. I got. Um, I have this idea of this flat-ish kind of uh, almost like a like an armor shape thing that's yeah. kind of on the head and uh and then i tried with the ridges things everybody seemed to be doing ridges in the line so i just thought you know what if uh what if they were kind of you know spread out a little bit and start that's, that's good i like that yeah then i had this this idea of maybe that they could uh, have this kind of uh horn here um and uh, well, I also I also like I'm, try, I'm been trying to push the idea that their neck is a little bit longer. I want them to have these these powerful neck muscles. It's a little bit longer than human. I like that. I I, I can see the power in the neck. And you're gonna face it. If you have an elongated head, like you said, even if it's counterbalanced, you're gonna have to have a strong neck to support it. Right. And. Uh, I had had the notion. I I wrote I wrote to you. I don't know. Uh, I can see how someone would just think it's silly, but I thought it was kind of awesome that uh, that maybe uh, you know they have they have the claws on their feet and hands and stuff. I kind of uh, imagined them as as uh, uh, it, kind of in the spirit of how like rams hit their heads against each other and stuff. I thought, what if, uh, uh, a, like, a, a common kind of instinctual fighting move would be to to jump on the opponent, kind of uh, uh, dig in with their, their claws and uh, uh, bring, you know, with powerful neck muscles, bring their um, head kind of down on them and, uh, you know, hit them using that horn stuff on the top of the head hard enough to like knock them out or something. That's, that's brilliant. And it's very fitting. I, I got the email like you're talking about giraffes. Uh, I like that idea, especially if we're going to make it armored, it's long. It's great for ramming. I mean, it's like yeah. no pun. It's no, no brainer. It'll be a good move. Now, what will that do against metal mechs and armor? I mean, they're going to have to learn, maybe you should do that. Yeah. But, but I think it's a brilliant idea. It may, it may even be a custom thing, you know. Right. See someone who's a friend that you haven't seen in a long time that they just headbutt each other. <laughs> and it's just kind of expected that you just take that and not let it bother you or you're not seen as particularly strong. Well, th that's that's what I was thinking. Like, uh, you know, this it would be enough to probably crack a, a human skull, but they have, like, the protection and stuff so so that they don't... Uh, d you know, die from that, and uh, just, uh, so that you know that was an idea. Uh, also, had a concept of uh, well, oh, uh, before I say that, that the idea kind of came from uh, uh, giraffes because they they use their neck uh, as you know they they'll whip it and they use it um, as a striking move and. Uh, uh, you know they can break bone with that, so it's that's very powerful. Like it, you know, if a giraffe did that to you, it would, it would kill you. So. Yeah, in a heartbeat. Yeah. So. Awesome, awesome jobs, dude. You got any more to show? Yeah. Well, I decided to put like maybe there's a little bump type thing there, and uh, and this is some of my process, kind of exploring there. I love how okay. Like as an art director, or even a client, you could take this to a client, throw it down. You're not overwhelming them in choice, 
but you're giving them some, a good amount of choice. But it's also narrowed in because it's all tied together. So it's not a hard choice. It's not a hard sell. Um, I love it. I love what you did. Great, great job. This is. I'm, I want to get a print out of that. I will print it out, and we're definitely going to show this to Buzz. I love your shading techniques you use too. It looks slick. It looks professional. Well done. Thanks. Yeah, I was going to say to anyone else out there watching, this is the very essence of concept art. Wolf came with a bunch of different looks. You know, nothing has been polished to this high end that you would have to spend weeks on, but just said, here are a bunch of different options. And then the client can look at that and go, well, hey, I really like those eyes. I really like that head. I love that chin. And then you've got somewhere to go. You just did a beautiful job with what you brought to the table, man. Amen. Well done, dude. Thanks. Well, well done. Yeah, I, I like I like this idea of a, a real strong kind of jetting jaw, and so I tried to do that. I, I, I the only thing I wish I wish I would have uh, realized er, earlier that uh, this needs to be higher up and whatnot. We have next Talk week for that. that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This is uh, the male profiles. So I started, you know, very. Uh, Plain, kind of just off of the the female thing, a little bit more of a jaw, and then so I tried to do all these different. I, I gotta parts. tell you, I love that spike or bone spike profile, yeah. and immediately in my head I saw a comic thing where some human in armor grabs one from behind, and then you get this close-up view of this spike sticking back at him, and the guy kind of going, "Uh oh." <laughs> and the guy back headbutts him and just messes him up. <laughs> yeah. um, so I, I ultimately liked this one the best. Thanks. I do too. And you, let me tell you why. Uh, the eye. You, you and I discussed the eye placement a little bit. I like how you place the eye a little bit back further so you can see more of the ridge. I, I like that. And I love the idea of a bone spike jetting out of the males like that. Right. Yeah, we've had a lot of females, and I have to commend you on going, yeah, maybe we need to look at this, and maybe they should be different. There's a lot of great stuff here. Well done. Yeah, definitely. I definitely want them to look different. All right, so here I pushed it a little bit, that same one. I um, made a, a few changes um, here, a little bit thicker. But uh, so you can kind of see it's this, it, it's, the idea, it's kind of this armor plate kind of plank thing <laughs> that uh, goes here and uh, and something I really like about it is is how th there's like these strong angles this angles d like this and then there's right. this angles down you know angle this way and I like how the ear is in the same angle as that and it just kind of juts out and it, seems, it just seems like really strong like a good read to me it is very good read well done proud of you and even busy dude yeah, yeah, the neck should have been, uh, it should have come back more. It needs to be thicker. I think it should be back more. But anyway, and this muscle's wrong. But anyway. <laughs> It's great. But I like the line of that muscle that follows up to where the eye is. I, that muscle is not right on a human, but maybe it is yeah. right there. Yeah. They'll probably not because uh, just it, it logically it should be it should be like right here. And, and this should be back more. That's kind of what screwed me up a little bit, I think. Looks anyway, good. Anyway, uh, and and the eye, that's in the right placement, you think? Yeah, definitely. This one. It's not for the woman, but all right. And then here, here's the woman. It's but it's it's not. It's a smaller head. Um, it's more it's more rounded. I enjoyed it. The, the eye's too big, and it should be back a little bit, but. But uh, here and here again, I like I like how it comes out. But it's not it's not it's not so it's not jutting out so much. It's a different kind of it's kind of a rounded out. Right. Well, like I women like are. I mean, our, our idealistic woman, right, wrong, or otherwise, the way I perceive them, they they should be nice and curvy, not like this bone waif on on the on the red carpets and stuff. The, these girls aren't supermodels. They're going out and killing their food. So uh, they can be lean, but but remember, women are made of curves and pretty stuff. Even aliens. Yeah. yeah. So I'm really. I think I did the best on the profiles. I'm really liking uh, 
how it, I, I think this, you know, it's enough to just have, you know, and this nose could be either kind, this kind, or, or what uh, has been suggested that the, the slots there. It's awesome. But, uh, but I, I, I think it makes a strong, even without the, the back, uh, I think just the front makes a strong, you know, it's kind of a different, you know, different than human. I agree. Well done, dude. I have, I have one more. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. All right, this is this is very rough. Uh, it's just an idea of the top of the head. So sorry, it's so rough, but it, it, it's warped. But I had had the idea that this for the males it could split. You know that that spike could be. Uh, I mean, it could be one, but I, I was thinking it could be two, and uh, where, whereas so it looked different from uh, the females because the females it would it would come back into into a rounded point right and not separate into these two so i thought that would be interesting and i, I was experimenting with uh, there might be some other you know shape to it on the on the plank now i know these look like little fish with faces but uh, you know i didn't even picture that that's and funny now it's awesome <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it, you know i mean this is it, it's a hard angle to do yes it is at least for me, but I mean, so this is the best it, I could do. You know what though, but you conveyed it. You conveyed a really cool idea. The hard angle, is it going to win you like uh, an art award? No, <laughs> but you got a great idea developed, and that's important for everybody listening. You don't have to be the like, again, not the world's greatest artist, but this is a damn good idea. Well done. Right, but I I just think so. Even when you, you know looking at, at the whatever whatever angle you're at, if you're looking down at them or whatever you can you could see definitely this is i'm looking at the male top of the head and or i'm looking at the, the female so that, and dude that's i'm inspired my... as soon as we're done tonight i'm gonna i'm gonna break it out and i'm gonna do a male elysian i'm gonna draw one yeah. i haven't drawn one yet i'm gonna, I'm gonna do that and, and these these things if if we had things like that they didn't have to be that big or they could be different you know all different kinds of things we could do with it but i just uh I wanted it to be, like I said, different than the, the females. Right. Um, I I also I also, uh, what what did you what did you think about the idea of of having, um, having them be, um, almost you know like how a a queen has um, has, you know, uh, like a queen bee or. Um, or, or an ant or something that they have soldiers and they have the you know uh workers and that kind of thing that's what? a cool idea mr a can work that into the system i, I mean we we touched base on that a little bit and how some of the class systems can work but that's kind of cool i would i was thinking like uh like so so like a warrior could look really different i was thinking for a warrior they could have uh, just like how this um it, it has has this horn which uh I'm trying to uh you can put other horns I'm, around I'm, it to make it look more aggressive right well 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 that too but but uh i was just i was trying to think of of what it, what what the the elephant horn uh almost, tusk tusk no but what's it ivory it's made of. ivory yeah so there could be something like uh think of kind of ivory um armor in a way it just kind of grows on some of the, the warriors so it's like it's uh i was thinking just kind of in the outline of 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 the of the chin as it, like it's kind of something that's three-dimensionally growing out of it like and uh and something for uh you know the head and that it can grow out of the body in places and stuff so it's just kind of like this bone not really bone but nylon um, uh, exoskeleton almost, you know. That's a very cool idea. Dude, I'm still going to play around with this tonight. I appreciate, seriously, appreciate you bringing these ideas to the table. Yeah, and I, I, was, I was also thinking there could be other things um, like on this uh, on the side of the head, like there could be stuff here. I was thinking of a, I was actually thinking of a little curvy thing with little things that jut out of it um, a little bit. Uh, I was thinking of a, a little bit of uh, 
I don't know that it'd really be there, but <laughs> uh, I guess let me let be... me stop you right here because yeah, of interest no in time running out of time. Put some more ideas on paper. You got some great ideas. I appreciate you. Seriously, you've done some great work. Uh, keep it up, and we'll definitely be talking some more uh, this week. If that's, that's cool. cool. You. Um, yeah. Hey, no worries, man. Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Nelson. If you can throw it back to my screen, I will make it short, sweet to the point. Then I want to get uh, Richard here because of his magic stuff. Is that cool with you? Yep. Hold on. Here we go. Uh, tying into uh, the character stuff, what we're going to do, and I, I don't have one of an Aletheian, but there's a thing called a turnaround. This is for a comic book I did, Cutie Pie. But we'll do the front, back, and then kind of an interesting type sort of shot. That's what we're going to be moving to eventually once we get the Aletheans done. Now, here's what I did this week. Uh, I did this today. Uh, basic spot black. Just made a whole black figure and just did some veiny stuff in there and and maybe what some of their clothes might look like. It was cool. It was fun. Down and dirty. Real super quick. Uh, I did this one, I think, last night. I was like, man, I talked to my wife. I'm like, man, everyone's getting really good. I better step up my game. So I love to call this uh, my Christopher Shy uh, method. It's photo manipulation. It's painting on top of everything. Uh, more of an aquatic sort of feel, like underwater sort of thing. Um, Again, with my nose, I didn't really put any nostrils in just yet. But uh, anyway, that's what I was thinking. Even some leather sort of armor and a big, big-ass big weapon that you can cleave somebody in half. Okay. So uh, that's what I did this last couple of days and this other stuff. I wanted to show that. So I, I think that's going to be it with uh, characters for, for right now. Unless anybody else who's not already on, does anybody else have any questions, Mr. N Mr. Nelson, about any of uh, the character stuff? Uh, I don't see any questions, no. All right, then we will move him. I'm sorry, go Ty, ahead. Ty, Ty just ran in from his track meet on his way to the shower and was asking if he had any feedback on the uh, storyline stuff he sent to you. I do, and we need to get Ty on here next time when he's on here because I, I don't want to speak for him. I want him to be able to tell the story himself. Uh, Ty is a young guy, and I like that. He has got lots of fresh ideas, but he also plays a lot of video games, so he's very concerned with, with reason not to overlap stuff and try to make things new and innovative. But Ty has done a couple of really cool, good, actually one really good story so far. I really like it. And next week, tell him to get his butt here earlier if he can, and I want him to discuss it if that's cool with you guys. Cool with me. Make him talk. Make him talk. Make him talk. You can't make me. <laughs> I tell him I'll school him again on any game he chooses. Just play me. Go, go, take a, go take a shower, you stink. <laughs> All right. If you can get Richard's screen, Mr. Nelson. All righty. Uh, Richard coming up. Howdy. Hey, guys. How do you hear me? I can hear you well. I, we didn't get to really discuss a lot of magic stuff last week. I definitely wanted to get to you today or tonight and uh, explain what you've been working on. Okay. Uh, uh, well, thanks for being in 3DS Max and not Maya. Ha, Derek. Whatever. <laughs> no worries. Um, yeah, I kind of grew up with that, so I got into 3DS Max and never looked back. There you go. Um, yeah, primary, it's basically been, at the moment, I've been redoing the stuff that I had from last, uh, from the first session that I presented in, but uh, I took the suggestions to heart and basically rendered it against, uh, well, rendered it with the alpha channel, so that if another artist wants to take that and sort of composite it into their own stuff with another character or, like, hand-drawn art, they could do that. Nice. Thank you for that. Excellent. And I was actually, uh, the idea of the comic gave me an idea where it's like, okay, if we need some effect to go off on this panel, that sort of thing, if I know what that's going to be, I can just go ahead and get that ready to go, and then it can get composited into the background somewhere. Great idea. Uh, which, which brings up a question. As we start into that, are we going to be storyboarding back and forth with real simple lines first, or...? Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, the basic process, uh, what I want to have everyone do is, 
at Rave whenever the story is complete. If you're happy with it, we'll all get copies of it, and we'll all do like two or three thumbnails of page one, and then we're going to come at a meeting. This this panel works. I like this angle. Let's do this, and then we'll start assigning. Okay, you're going to draw this. You're going to do this, and you know, dividing tasks. But I want everyone who is creative to come up with thumbnails. And again, it can just be stick people. It doesn't have to be anything intricate. It doesn't have to be Marvel-esque or Image-esque. It is throwing down an idea. Thumbnails are supposed to be dirty and silly. Yeah. Um, just I uh, want to double check. You guys are looking at the fireball image right now? Yes, yep. there's. Yep. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, I was working on this one as sort of like a firewall type effect. Uh, where I don't know how it would exactly it would work from a game mechanic point of view. I thought maybe something where uh, you know, the player would draw a line on the ground to indicate the area that they wanted to affect, and then it would just create that firewall in that region. Okay. And then, so if you have like another character that's like uh, shooting arrows or something like that, if they fire one of those through uh, through that firewall, then it basically catches fire on the other side, and then you're doing fire damage to a target as well. I like that idea. Uh, and there's that's the lightning pretty, man. Eagle. That's some kick butt lightning, dude. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Especially to put on an alpha channel when like lightning's primarily white, for you to to divvy it up like great job, great eye for detail. Cool, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, another thing I was thinking of doing is uh, rendering out a few different lightning bolts just by themselves, and then the impact effects by themselves, and then again. The artist that wants to can take those and composite them into the image in whatever way they need to to get yeah, the effect that they that's need. That's more work for you, but that is a great idea. Yeah, definitely a great idea, and something we will definitely utilize. Okay. Uh, and then this was just sort of a quick pass at um, more or less a magic missile system, where it's just a bolt of arcane energy that goes between the caster and the target, and it would just sort of home in until it hits the poor guy. Nice. Magic missile! I actually have a exactly. little idea for a bow that that really ties in too nicely. Sweet. I look forward to seeing it. And then, yeah, this is the same idea as before with, like, sort of gas cloud. I mm -hmm. just rendered it against the alpha channel. Nice. Uh, and and I had some other ideas like... for... Sorry, go ahead. No, no, I'm saying we've got a lot of talent here. I'm very happy and honored to be a part of all this. You guys are rocking it. Cool. Uh, I had another idea for sort of like an ice type effect. Um, I'm still trying to work out the look of it, but the idea would be similar to the magic missile idea. But if it was like a beam type effect, then you would also have sort of a frost effect on the ground. Like it's that cold. Nice. Very cool attention to detail. I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to render that, but, um, yeah. I've R Richard, have you ever played Halo? Uh, I played the first one briefly. Do you remember the Needler? I remember getting killed by it lots. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I could see uh, the way they did the uh, munitions for that as, as a type of ice effect that would be pretty cool. That'd be pretty sweet, yeah. I'll go back and uh, I'll take another look for sure. All right. Uh, what, okay, so you've been kind of silent the last couple of weeks because you've been busy and we didn't get to you last week. Recap tonight for us. Start from the story and talk a little bit about the characters and you'll have a last word tonight. What do you think about the whole, whole shebang so far? Uh, well, I'm really liking the way the story's coming together, and I love that bit that Ray narrated there with the with the character getting her stone for the first time and trying to figure out what the heck to do with it. Um, that just opens up tons of character development possibilities. Um, from a mechanic standpoint, I understand the desire for a class-based system. I personally, uh, I tend to shy away from classes. I find it a little too restrictive. Um, I've always preferred the sort of environments where you can multi-class if you want. So if you wanted to have somebody that's D3 
decent with a sword but can still throw a spell at somebody's face, I like to have that option open. Um, but MMOs being what they are, balance is a nightmare at the best of times, let alone trying to mix and match skills. You know, well, that's, that's not to say we can't do it. That's not to say that we can't be the first one to pull it off. And this goes to uh, the eight, head, eight heads, Nelson and his group. Nelson, what, what do you think about that, dude? You mean as far as multi-classing? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah multi-classing. Would it be much harder to, to get things in balance for, for the game if you were able to do that? As far as balancing, yeah, you definitely need um, to put a lot more effort into balancing. Mm. Because it kind of makes me think of the druid. I love my druid because I can change into an animal and fly, and I didn't have to spend lots of gold to do that. But the best of times is my druid. I am a piss poor thief or a piss poor fighter because uh, she can actually, like you said, kind of multi uh, multi class. Uh, but it's something that we can definitely explore and look at. Sure, I'm not. I'm not against exploring any specific ideas. Cool. 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 And, and he's the man. He said everything's impossible. He didn't say that was impossible. <laughs> all right well thank you very much uh any, any last thoughts uh as far as the character designs i'm loving the way those are coming together and personally i can't wait to have a a a workable mesh to be able to rig it up and get into some of these 3d scenes i know right it's so cool <laughs> it's like we're having a baby it's seven or eight feet tall baby but with horns and we want to go how it came out but um i'm excited too i'm excited to be a part while of we're on that richard are you are you fairly good at rigging and and all that um i mean well, i'll be, be a hard surface but i will be completely honest as far as rigging up a character and animating them that's one of those things i've always shied away from because you know you can build a spaceship and stuff like that and have it move however you want and nobody except a scientist can really tell you that you're doing it wrong because none of us really know what that would look like for something to fly around in space. But we see people walk and move and talk all the time. Right. So if you get that wrong, you might not necessarily know why it's wrong, but you're going to know something's wrong. So that's always something I've kind of shied away from, and I'm definitely looking forward to the... Uh, if, if I were to rig an Alethean right now, that would be my first. Awesome. Well, well, then you're going to be able to do it. Uh, remember the role attribute on the foot. I'm anxious to see how that is going to happen. That's true, yeah. Yeah, so, the feet, that's going to be interesting. And what are their shoes going to look like? No, oh, they don't have shoes. We don't need those thinking shoes. It's kind of like, you know, a horse in a horseshoe. Uh, Arthur said it best in the movie, you know. It's, it's hard, you know, I wouldn't want to date a horse because they really commit. If that's the only shoe you can wear, that's the only shoe you pick out, they're a committed animal. And being young, you don't want to do that commit too soon to just one, one thing. So, yeah, our Lethians, they're, they're free-loving people. They don't, they don't have shoes. Cool. Word, word to your mama. Okay, guys and gals, with that, uh, go to 3D Buzz Forum. I want you part of the team. We've got art leads. We have more room for more art leads. Uh, we have tons of room for lots more artists. Uh, shoot me a, a, an email at stevensd71 at gmail.com anytime. I'm busy. I will try to get back to you as soon as I can. I appreciate everybody doing this. Ray, you got a great kick butt story, dude. I mean, I'm seeing it right now. I'll email all the art leads when we're going to meet uh, to start working on the thumbnails whenever Mr. Ray is ready to send out the story and he's, he's happy with it, send it out, and we'll start doing some thumbnails. I cannot wait for our, our mesh to get into Richard's hands. Um, I, I, I think I'm going to have to start, and I'm sorry, you, you Max guys, I'm going to have to start doing some more Maya stuff here so I can get up to speed so I can start helping model and stuff again because I'm, I'm really excited about that. Um, so with that, I appreciate everybody being here tonight. We'll have our next class next Thursday. Also, uh, to announce, we'll have the anatomy and physiology class. I think it's a five-week course. We're going over all major muscles on man, woman, hands, eyes, ears, feet. Um, and then immediately following, there won't be a break. It'll be like end of class next week, uh, sci-fi fantasy class starts. It will be, I think, an eight-week class. And I'm actually asking Buzz for more time instead of two hours. Um, and I understand two hours is a big commitment for anybody. You guys don't have to stay the whole time. I hope that you do. 
but especially with the anatomy and physiology, as I demonstrate, um, it's important that everybody gets it. And you know, drawing on the fly, I'm going to make some mistakes too, and I want to, I want to build in some oops time. Uh, but I think it's important. I think everyone is at the point now. We had the 101 drawing class, we had the sci-fi class, and I think this will tie in brilliantly with the MMO game, learning uh, shapes, muscles, and all that, and then directly with the sci-fi class because we have, I'm sorry, uh, the fantasy class. We have a lot of fantasy like sci-fi slash elements in the Elysian world. I think it's only going to help us, not going to hurt us. So with that, everybody uh, be good. Keep your feet on the ground, your ankles slightly above them, and uh, draw, draw, draw.